Why, hello. Welcome back to Feminine Rising Podcast. If you keep hearing this clinking, I'm so sorry. I'm drinking water out of my blue water bottle. Hold on. It's a hot day out here in Sedona's. All right. I don't know why we call it that here in Phoenix, but we do. There's a lot of updates, a lot of changes, a lot of things. As you can tell, my background is completely different from last season. <laughs> I have a new background. I'm in my bed today, but you will be seeing different backgrounds throughout. Um, the house is my office. Did you hear that, IRS? The house is my office. I podcast in different areas of the house. Today, it's the bedroom. Tomorrow or even later today, it might be the kitchen, dining room, could be my office, I have two offices. One office is for bookkeeping. The other is where ceremony is held. Could be downstairs in the living quarters. Anywhere. Could be on patio. Probably not though because it's like 80 degrees. But my point is my house is my business and vice versa. So anywho, I had to put that out there for the IRS. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get that free rent. <laughs> anyway. Welcome back. For those of you that are new, my name is Amber Moreno, and things usually aren't this hilarious on here, but we're going to start keeping it more authentic on here. So I like to do a audio version of this as well as a YouTube version. So if you're watching this over on YouTube, good to see you. You might notice a few things different on myself as well, um, other than the background, which is what I was talking about earlier. So for those listening over on Spotify, you're like, what is she talking about? I actually need to learn how to upload these files into Spotify to get them to play as well, but I just haven't gotten quite there yet. Maybe one day, but today's not that day. So maybe by next season or maybe by the end of this season, who knows? It's just whenever I can get around to it. So let's talk to YouTube first. So on YouTube, you might've noticed, and even over on Instagram, if you are listening, you follow me over on Instagram, maybe you've noticed my tattoo. So if you watch this on YouTube, I am showcasing it. So this is the Mary Magdalene anchor. Um, it is something that really means something to me. Um, Mary Magdalene is somebody that is overlooked and what's the word I want to use? Ridiculed, put down, false information um, in the Bible. And the reason for that was because of how powerful that she actually is. Um, if you want to go ahead and look more into the story of Mary Magdalene, I highly encourage you to do so. Also check into the Sophia Code as well. Beautiful stories and facts, in my opinion, in there as well. Um, Mary Magdalene, for those that are like, what are you talking about? What is this? It's the first time hearing it. She was Jesus's wife. Our Bible denies that because it was edited a bunch of times by a bunch of different white men. The Bible was colonized. <laughs> so... Anyway, but the point of getting this was not to remind myself of that. The point of getting this tattoo of the anchor of the Mary Magdalene is this is her crucifix. So it has the crucifix on the cross there. And then below is the heart with an eye. And the reason I put the eye in there in the center of the heart is because our heart is where we hold all of our Gnosticism all of the knowledge, all of the things that we came down here from our past lives, our life now, all of the codes in our DNA, how we talk to God, everything is located here in the heart. Bible and church tells you to deny the heart. That is the worst thing we can do for ourselves is deny that. So this is a reminder for me on days that I get in too much into my head to remind myself of that innate Gnostic knowledge that I have that gape love that I carry inside of me. And there's roses to also further represent the feminine. And it's on the left side. And originally when I was going to get this tattoo, I was going to get it done by a man out in, very talented artist, um, out in um, Las Vegas, actually. I was willing to travel. I love Vegas too, by the way, fun fact. That's my worldly uh, pleasure is Vegas, <laughs> literally. Um, but anyway... And so it turned out that the piece was not big enough. Um, he likes to do pieces that are at least half of my arm covered and bigger. And so it was too small for what I was wanting at the time. And he, he 
I get it. You know, some people can only do big tattoos. Some people can only do small ones. Um, and time is money, right? So I decided to find a different artist, which was actually, she was an artist I was following for a little while. Um, and I really liked her, really like her, not liked, but like her style a lot, obviously, because I got it on me. And I'm going to go with her. So maybe one day we'll continue this on. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, tattoos are something that I'm kind of becoming a mixed bag for me. Um, but I definitely, I don't see myself as somebody that will get covered up in tattoos, although I think I would look pretty badass if I was. But <laughs> uh, but I do like to put the tattoos on me that deeply mean something to me. So like one, another tattoo is my cat archer. He's on my right leg. Um, kind of like behind a little because he always kind of follows me around and I love him very much. So like those types of things, um, things that have meaning. Of course, my first tattoos, I don't know if they really had a whole ton of meaning to me at the time. I just kind of got them because I liked them and I think I just was ready to have a tattoo. I was 21. I waited till I was 21 to get my first tattoo, fun fact. So even though I wanted tattoos ever since I was like 14, I waited and I'm glad I did because I like my choices <laughs> so far. So good. Anyway. But that's the little story um, on that. And then I obviously have my, what are they called? My big three, um, rising sun and moon sign on my fingers, which I got those before I got the bigger one. But now I don't feel so lame because <laughs> I have a bigger tattoo. It's a tattoo world just pushing their conditioning onto me. You can get whatever you want. If you want to get finger tattoos first, go ahead. You want to tattoo your face first, go ahead. You know, don't listen to nobody. They don't know. Only you know. Anyways, so this episode's going to be like a little catch up. So that's one part of it. The next part that I wanted to speak about is well, obviously, I moved to Sedona since then. And originally, the plan was just to keep going with the podcast, keep it going. And you know what? I was like, no. I'm a projector. I need to respect myself and my boundaries and my energy. Therefore, I decided to just take a break. So I took a break from everything, including my business. Um, I really wanted to reevaluate like where I'm headed with that. And I feel like I'm in a really good spot now. Um, I just launched my website today at the day of this recording. It's Tuesday, May 28th. And I wanted to get it out this month. So I got the goal accomplished, which is great because in the past, I definitely... Um, probably just would have burned out or whatever, procrastinated. I don't know. One of those things, but it's up and running. I want the, po the podcast will be streamed on there as well. Eventually I need to figure out how to do that, but we shall see. But ultimately my website is going to be my new hub. So on my Instagram, I currently am using Linktree. Everything's going to go over to the website. So you can actually book directly with me on the website get all the information on my offerings directly on the website. You don't have to click like 50,000 links like before on my link tree. Um, and then, you know, all the events and things will be on there as well as they come about. So my husband and I are still very new settling into Sedona. This is a perfect segue too. And we love it here so far. I love it. I love the side of town I live on. I don't live anywhere near uptown, which is beautiful because the traffic going that way is crazy sometimes. Originally, we were going to move to the VOC, um, which those that are not from here, that stands for uh, Village of Oak Creek. And it worked out that we didn't move down there because the traffic is atrocious. Like I thought California traffic was bad. It gets just as bad up here in Sedona because it's literally like one road that you can go up and down. And all of the cool stuff is in the uptown area. So I like where I live. I like I love it here so far. I plan to stay here. Um, as long as we can. I like the neighbors, you know, um, very nice older women that live around me, a lot of feminine energy on this block. It's actually quite beautiful and a lot of nature, the javelinas, like they have their own little like path that they have created over time and they walk right through the lot next to us. And it's great. I love the house. I like how it overlooks the mountains. Like it's beautiful. It's great. I love that I have basically two offices. Well, one eventually will probably be a child room, but for now it's two offices, you know? And so it's really nice. Um, and it's almost like the house is split, which is, I mean, it is a split actually, because my room 
is upstairs with the kitchen and everything. So it's like, I have my own little apartment up here and then downstairs is, you know, where most of the office stuff is, but I still use the whole house as my office, you know, anyway, but, um, yeah, we love it here. We're, um, me and my husband are getting around where my husband's actually making friends for the first time since I've known him, which is kind of, kind of, kind of, you know, whatever. Uh, but, and then for myself, I'm also making friends, which I feel like women, we tend to make friends pretty, pretty easily, you know, interactions with each other. We can kind of decide right on point, you know, whether we like that, that lady or not. Um, so it's been, it's been a really good, beautiful time. My nervous system has definitely been regulating. I don't know how all of you feel on your nervous system, but there has been a lot of energy moving, a lot of transits going on. And I'm definitely doing a lot more of the breaking up conditioning. So I am learning about myself that I have quite a few trauma responses that I need to deal with and they will be dealt with. I'm working through them and I think it's a beautiful thing. I'm learning new somatic exercises that I'm also going to incorporate with my clients as well that help to regulate the nervous system. And I'm also starting to work on a few things with different breath techniques as well. So I'm really excited for, you know, the way everything's going. We're definitely, um, I'd say like in a pre-launch phase as far as like just general life is concerned. Um, behind the scenes, there's been a lot happening that I don't show on Instagram. I know I said I'd show it on my YouTube, but I don't always have the opportunity to record because it's not always my behind the scenes, but I am definitely a space holder for that. So for example, like my husband, he's going through some things with learning how to use his energy and how to be a true energy healer. And um, that requires holding space for him sometimes listening you know collaborating even teaching him as well you know and so it's been just very interesting um very nurturing our relationship is growing in ways i didn't think it was going to um we're also discovering things about each other that we didn't really recognize and just growing together as a married couple is very interesting and those that are listening that are married know what i'm talking about or in a long term relationship right you know, when you've been with the same person for more than five years, you start to get to know them. And they always say, right, 10 years is the mark when you really truly know your marriage. Like that's the testament of time if you can make it past those first 10. And it's true. And uh, I, I definitely feel that. <laughs> and more is to come as we get older, right? Body parts start changing things start sagging, lines show up in places and hair that you never thought they was going to, you know, it's part of the human experience. It's a beautiful thing though, um, to see how the bodies react and grow. And for me, at least this past six months, actually, my husband has experienced me in my worst positions when I was like screaming, crying in pain to broken out in hives completely. I, I got, I was experiencing really bad, like plaque, like psoriasis in hives on my skin. It didn't turn into full blown psoriasis, but it was turning into that. Um, luckily those of you that follow me on Instagram know that I'm really big on medical mediums protocols in the morning. I do them every single day. I do very, vary them depending on on what my body needs at this time, but this is a time where detox is now necessary, right? The toxic load was too high. My body couldn't handle it, whether that was, you know, um, different hormones being released from my adrenals, not, um, or being taxed, I'm sorry, or, you know, the nervous system not regulating, right? Releasing different cortisol response chemicals on top of smelling different fragrances that I wasn't aware of and hair products that I discovered, um, whether that's, you know, different cleaning products that I didn't think were going to be bad for me, but they are it's just all these things adding up. Right. And then we have to think about environmental, you know, there's heavy metals being sprayed on us every single day. You know, there's fluoride in the water. There's all these things. Break dust is real too, by the way. I know people are like, that's a Joe Rogan thing. Break dust is a thing. Where is that going? You're breathing that in. It's getting on your skin. It's going in your hair and your nose everywhere, like your mouth. 
So we, you, we don't always think of these things, but that's what I believe kept loading up, loading up, loading up. And I told my husband, my body warned me prior to, I just wasn't listening because my digestion, I noticed was really slow and I wasn't, I felt like the food, you know, when your food sits in your chest almost, and you're like, oh my God, I want to eat that cookie, but I just can't. That's what it felt like. And that was, should have been my cue to start detoxing at that point, but I didn't listen and I waited until now or last week, I should say, and when it got really bad and then I was like, okay, I really need to seriously cut the, sh cut the shit out, like literally. And that's what I did. And, um, I healed myself within three days, but it was rough. So I'm still detoxing. I think I'm going to keep it up until I get back from New Jersey. I got to go out to New Jersey for um, family, my husband's birthday and my nephew's birthday are on the same day. So we will be celebrating that. It'll be a good time, but I hate the Newark airport. I hate it. I probably hate LaGuardia too. I just don't know it because I haven't been there in a while. The EMFs are just out of this world there. Like you can literally feel them once you walk in, if you're sensitive enough and the cameras, the fake face recognition, the whole like nine yards, they got it. It's insane. But um, this is why we do energy meditation shields, protecting ourselves, right? This is why we do dietas or detoxing or properly, you know, being able to cleanse the body in a way where you're supporting it to get rid of these things, if that makes sense. So that's what I, I'm aiming at right now, personally. Um, what else do I need to update you on? I went mountain biking, totally ate it. If you saw me on Instagram, I talked about it a little bit, but my whole my whole legs are messed up. I got bruises, cuts. And then I dropped a giant metal tumbler on my toe when I was shopping, and it's still black. I wonder if I can put my foot up with the one toe. You can kind of see it on YouTube. I got my one black toe. It was really bad before. It actually is way better. My husband was like, you're lucky the nail didn't fall off. I was like, I know that would have been gross, right? Can you imagine me? I would literally be putting a press on nail. No shame. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I think that's pretty much all the updates I have for now. That's really been it. It's really just been me working on getting this place put together. I think eventually I would like to do like a cribs version of, you know, my house, like uh, over on YouTube. But yeah, um, other things I can say, um, I sat with combo during the time I haven't been on here. That's, that was the thing too, that I did. It was a good reminder to sit with it actually, because when I look back at the experience, it was very much just reminding me how strong I am and that I don't need to wait for things to have things. I can just call it in and ask for it. And that I have to remind myself that, yeah, I'm not a man, a gener generating manifester. However, I am a specific manifester in a projector aura. So knowing this, that means I can still manifest things and I need to do that. So that was the one reminder. And the other reminder was just to remember how like strong I am. And then I was also being reminded um, just of how powerful the frog medicine is and how it wants to create a way and a type of flow into my life, but it hasn't really told me how. And I don't necessarily see myself becoming a combo practitioner or anything like that. Even though I'm so familiar with the medicine and the ritual of it that I could, it would just be getting certifications at this point, but you know what I mean? Like, hmm. but combo was good. Um, it also helped me kind of to get my immune system back on track. I really like it for that, to be honest. So I experience a lot of strep flare-ups, so combo really helps me with that. It puts it out pretty quick, usually almost the same day, um, depending on how many points I'm doing. But it's, yeah, it's a powerful medicine as well. 
I definitely think it has its place. I don't believe everyone needs to do it or should be doing it because there are, you know, things you have to consider like the body's health, where you are, what medications are you on, those types of things. But for regulating your immune system, I think it's it's a good good thing. I also think it's a good thing for those that don't like to be uncomfortable. I'm someone that doesn't like to be uncomfortable. I love to be comfortable. So for me, it's a really powerful medicine in that way because it reminds me, this is why we're saying it, it it's strong. It reminds me how strong I am because it reminds me of in these moments when I'm sitting in the uncomfortable that, look, these are the moments that are part of life that make the comfort so much better right? It's those uncomfortable, painful moments even. Um, One thing I was being reminded of too was, you know, well, you don't know. I'm sorry. It's just a thing I say. My right side, I, so I was in a car accident when I was 21. Right side is also the masculine control is on this side. We're not talking brains. We're talking physical left and right. Okay. And on this side, um, I was just holding on to so much that I had chronic pain on the side and it flared up really bad um, over the, it was actually right, probably, I don't know if I was still recording last season's podcast, but it was around the time I ended it or decided to take a break from it. And I was literally screaming in pain, crying, couldn't stop. And somehow my husband managed to get me um, into an emergency appointment with one of my um, masseuses. She's like a trigger point massage therapist lady. And she was able to help me get me from like a 10 because it was a fucking 10 to basically like a a four or five, um, which was more, way more manageable, obviously. And I forgot where I was going with the story, but basically, uh, oh, So with that, it's the reminder of like pain like that, right? It makes the moments where we do have our mobility and we do have our health, like we are more grateful for it, right? Because I think a lot of us, including myself, we tend to kind of take advantage of the fact that there's nothing wrong with us per se. Like we can walk and sit and dance and not have pain in these moments and we forget how much of like a privilege that is in this world because earth is very dense. Okay. I think, you know, we all forget about this. Earth is dense. It has a core. It's a solid core, not necessarily an iron core, but it's, it's solid. The ro- It's rock. And in the middle, it's molting. And knowing that, that means the things on it are dense. Like we're very dense. Our cells are very packed tight. That's why we're able to see and feel things, right? And with that comes emotions and pains and different types of these energetic fields coming through in and out. And we are energetic beings. We're electric beings, right? That's why the brain signals little like piston engines and sends the signals to our our neurons and all of these things, right? And so the beauty of that though is the ability to feel and having that density feeling that electricity working through us is what I believe is what creates the sensories in us. And so when we are able to feel all these things, whether it's, you know, an emotion or a physical pain, whatever that case might be, like I said, it just makes the times when it's lighter and not so dense that much better. And when we can kind of look at life that way and remind ourselves like, Hey, and earth is dense, you know, I'm dense, (laughs) not in a bad way, because I know that's an insult too, but you know what I mean? Like it just, it gives us our power back in those moments. I, I like to relate it to that way to myself at least. And that's what I get to do. And then in the times when we fall sick and ill, we're thankful for the times that we were well, and then we do our best to get back to that place surrendering to the illness at the time or whatever the feeling is 
right? Like if you're sad, just cry. Like that was the number one thing I was thinking about this actually yesterday, how I really wasn't allowed to cry as a kid. It, I mean, most of us weren't allowed to cry as a kid, right? What was the first thing mom would try and do or the parent around you would try and do when you were crying? They try to get you to stop, not flow through it and let it just naturally take its course and stop on its own. They want to put a halt to it. And that's not good because we're electric. So you're literally hitting against a wall. When electricity hits against a wall, that's where explosions happen. That's not good. And so we're creating these little explosions that we're holding inside. Hell yeah, you're creating a pressure cooker, you know? And so got to let that go. Got to let it flow. But the emotions, when you let them go, this is where you get back into that regulated nervous system. You get back into homeostasis with your emotions and you start alchemizing your own blood by doing that. And then if you add breathing and breath work into that, it's a whole nother level of helping yourself on the physical level, right? As well as your energetic and ancestral. So anyway, I don't know how I got on that tangent, but it needed to be said, I guess, because here we are. But anyway, I don't want to talk off your ear too much. And I don't, I'm trying to think, is that all of the updates I have for you? There's a big bumblebee on my window. It's huge. Okay. So we moved. That was the biggest thing. I went through my pain. I sat with combo. I'm preparing myself for another medicine journey. Um, it'll be one of the last, I will, one of the only ones I will do. There's two I'm doing this year. This year is the year of working with mushrooms. Oh, this is the last update I have. And then we can part ways until next week, but mushrooms, <laughs> they're very much in my field, I guess. I am a mushroom is what I was told as well. I am mycelium. You're mycelium. We're all, we just, some of us don't realize it, but for me, I'm very grounded. I have a lot of fire in my chart, but I'm earth sign through and through. And the mushrooms like to talk through me. Don't know what it is. So I was experiment, experimenting with the Amanita mushroom. That is the, some people call them toadstools. It's the little red emoji mushroom that we have on all of our phones. That's quote unquote poisonous. So the fun thing about this plant is that that's just it. It's fun. Psilocybin is a little, is, is scary in my opinion, because it's that death and rebirth process. Right. So you have to be prepared for that because psilocybin is going to kill your ego, but it's also going to show you the shit you need to work on as well as it'll give you some fun too, if you channel it, but for the most part, it's going to bring some things up. Amanita can do the same thing. I haven't been on high doses of it, so I don't have that relationship that way with it, but I was microdosing it. And in doing that, I was channeling that mushroom and asking it to step in in certain aspects of my life, you know, to make things fun again, or to show me things in a different way that maybe, you know, psilocybin can't because every, the thing with plants is they're all sisters and cousins and brothers, right? Um, but they all have a different entity because that's what they are. They're entities. And so every mushroom, like, yeah, there's like a big, I'm sure there's like a big mushroom God because I've seen it. But there's also different little mushroom, um, like entities, I guess that's the best word I can use underneath that one. So kind of like, right. Like when we think of like reptiles, but then there's snakes and alligators and all these different things, right? Like subcategories, I guess. There you go. Subspecies. Is that a word? I don't know. But anyway. Um, my point being is that when you work with different plants, you get to understand them on deeper levels because now we're not just talking to one, we're talking to multiple. 
And you can even call them in when you're communing with different ones as well, if you want, if you're familiar. So like, if I know like a lot of people like to work with like lion's mane and reishi and cordyceps and uh, turkey tail, and these different types of mushrooms that have their own, you know, their own um, consciousness along with psilocybin. And then together they create this beautiful symphony of an experience for you. And so with Amanita, I was microdosing it to understand it in that way too. And so I did a lot of research on it. I discovered somebody I know that, that processes it for me. So I got it from her and, you know, she told me start small. I, it's a tincture. I started with three drops. I didn't even take a whole tincture and I already could feel the effects of it. It's so it's calming in a way to where you don't feel like you're out of your head necessarily or out of your body. You're very much present. You're very much here, but it's like, there's this ease to it, which I really like. Um, and so for this season of my life, I'm really diving into regulating the nervous system, mine, <laughs> not the mine, my nervous system. And with that, you know, incorporating the Amanita was a very beautiful um, experience, at least microdosing it. I know it can take you to some deep and dark places, just like psilocybin can, because it is a psychedelic technically. But, <clears throat> excuse me, Ooh, I just came back from chocolate treat before this. I'm sorry. Um, but that was, yeah, so that was another thing that I've been kind of working with and playing around with a little bit. I'm pausing all consumption of medicinal type of mushrooms for now because I am, like I was saying earlier, I'm preparing to sit with some of them later on um, this summer. And so when I do that, um, we'll see what they have to say. And then obviously I'll keep you updated and integration and all these things. Um, but integrating with the mushrooms that I've been with the Amanita mushroom has been really, really cool. And she's been popping up more and more and more, um, is the other thing. Like everywhere I go, random people that I didn't even think cared about that mushroom, they'll post about it. Um, it's just, it's here. Maybe it'll be the new fad, just like psilocybin was last year. Um, I hope not. I really hope not because it's going to take away another medicine from us if <sighs> big brother finds out, but you know what I mean? Like it's a, uh, it's a pretty powerful magical plant when used correctly and prepared correctly. Cause that's the other thing. It's all about the preparation prior to consum consumption. That's how you don't make yourself sick or die. Just saying. Um, but so yes, I will be sitting, I actually be sitting twice this year with psilocybin in large doses, um, larger doses, I should say. Um, oh, one message that was really given to me, actually, it's reminding me right now, is that to have more fun and to co-create more with my husband. Those were the biggest messages. And I'll leave you with this because I do want to do a separate podcast on the, or a separate episode on this. And it is about co-creating with your spouse. And that's a really big thing. And I was really shown that, um, I was shown and told some other things as well that is in the realm of relationships. Um, that topic being of sex and how to utilize that, not just for pleasure, but in for my benefits, if that makes any sense. And that when it's done consciously in a way where the two of you are on the same page, this is how Tom Brady won the Super Bowl. Okay. That's all I'm going to say on that. But, <laughs> you know, it, these are the things that I was given. And these are the things that I am continuing to integrate. And so during this time, I'm integrating it all and just really, like I said, preparing myself for the next journey that I will be on. And yeah, you know, that's really basically it. 
for ketchup. Nothing else too exciting other than, you know, regular, like, everyday things you kind of deal with. Like, my cats, he was dealing with some stuff, and now he's better. Um, we're trying our best to kind of help our house out a little bit. Because as much as I love it, it it needs some desperate TLC from the owner who's not giving it to it. Um, so I'm trying my best here, but also calling it in that this is going to be my property. So anyway. Thank you so much for listening. If you made it this far into the podcast, I really do appreciate you and you listening to me for this long. That's 333 as I'm ending this. So if that's your number, that's for you. I also saw 321, which is another number of mine. So I have missed all of you. Thank you so much again for being here. And we are back. We are rolling. And it's really exciting. It's an exciting time. So much more to talk about, all of the psychic things, all of the herbal things, all of the womb things, relationship things, human design things, all of it we're going to talk because it's great. And I'll probably be talking more and more about nervous system regulation as well. Uh, but yeah, so until next time, sorry, there are birds at my window that are just so distracting. Until next time, I'll see you when I see you.